Chapter 4 Just Trying to Get By Ryugu was now on a train, headed back to his old hometown, Greenvale. The ride from Gardenvale, where he currently resided, to Greenvale was about an hour commute. He was worried about the price of the ticket initially, only to find out that his aunt Samiko had already paid for one in advance. It had been a whole year since he'd seen his aunt last, but time passed quickly. Considering all he'd been through, it felt like a paradox. Each day seemed to drag on. But when Ryuga looked back in retrospect, he felt as if time was desperately slipping away from him. Perhaps it was the price of constantly being a prisoner of his own thoughts. Ryuga could do little else but stare out of the window at the passing scenery as he made his way back home. Each year, he was allowed to leave school early so that he could pay his respects to his mother's grave. Since the complete trip was over two hours in duration, his homeroom teacher, Mrs. Konami, had taken to just giving Ryuga the entire afternoon off for the past five years since the custom started. Ryuga's thoughts bounced from his mother to his aunt and then to Akira in no particular order. Each woman embodied a different emotion. Sadness, hope, and comfort. A strange trio of feelings which took turns assaulting his heart in various ways. On the best of days, Ryuga would fight with his emotions to avoid remembering something traumatic. But on this day, of all days, he could do little else. Thoughts of his mother's outstretched hands, her voice, her warmth. All of these sensations flooded back as vivid memories which both gave him peace and tormented him in equal measure. But still, this was the least he could do for his mother, and also for himself. To reaffirm his resolve to keep on living, no matter what life might throw at him. Soon he was at the train station, eagerly greeted by his aunt and his cousin Eiko. Eiko was always happy to see Ryuga, and greeted him with a running jump as usual. This brought a smile to his face. No matter how down he felt, it was nice to be wanted on some level, a feeling Ryuga had long forgotten. The trio were soon in the car and headed back to Sumiko's home. Eiko and Ryuga had a common bond in the fact that their fathers were absent. Unlike Ryuga, Eiko's father was a policeman who died in the line of duty just two years prior to Ryuga's mother and her incident. Back then, Ryuga remembered how nice it was to live in the same town as his aunt and cousin. They would see each other most every weekend. Eiko was more like his sister than anything, the sister he'd never had. In many ways, she was stronger than Ryuga. She would always cheer him up when he looked sad and reassure him. Despite the fact that he could tell, Eiko must be hurting too, longing for her father. Ryuga's father, on the other hand, brought him nothing but misery and anger. He couldn't even think straight at the thought of his father's face, much less hearing his name. Thus, this was a sore subject to be mentioned. After a good meal, the trio then hopped into the car and headed to the graveyard. Both Sumiko and Eiko bowed their heads to the grave marked Sumaraji Ichika, offering their respects. Young Eiko burst into tears, prompting Ryuga to console her a bit before the mother and daughter duo made themselves scarce to give the young man time alone. So, another year has passed. That makes five years now? Maybe four? I'm sorry, I can never remember. Please don't hold it against me, Mom. Ryugu began as he searched for the words. Any words. He wasn't even sure if such a thing had meaning, but it felt right. It comforted him to come and share his thoughts and his life with his mother. So that is what he did. So, he'll never believe it. But I think I met a girl who likes me. She's pretty nice. You'd probably like her. Her name is Akira. She's got really pretty eyes. They remind me of stained glass, or maybe a kaleidoscope? I'm not sure which. They are very deep. They pull you in. School is good. Mrs. Konami is keeping an eye on me. Perhaps a bit too much. <laughs> I'm staying out of trouble as best I can. Ryuga paused for a moment as the words he truly wanted to share hit his heart. I miss you, Mom. A lot. Every day. All the time. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was too young. Too small to help you. To save you. That's actually an excuse. Ryuga said his tears started to stream down his face. The truth is, I should have run to you. 
I should have grabbed you and not let go. No matter what, I'd rather have died with you than spend another day here without you. But, he said between tears, I'm trying my best. I'll keep going. I'm trying my... because it's what you asked me to do. I love you. After the words were spoken, all Ryuga could do is bow his head into his hands and let the tears flow. Whoever said the tears would stop eventually was a liar. They never stop. You just learn to cry on the inside. After spending more time with his aunt and cousin, Ryuga finally boarded his train to return to Gardenvale. Oni-chan, take care. Come see us soon, Eiko said as she gave Ryuga a big hug. I'll try, for sure, Ai-chan, Ryuga said as he patted her on the head. Take care of Aunt Miko. Ryuga then turned to give his aunt a hug. The pair saw him off as the train left the station, and he watched until they were little more than dots on the horizon. As Ryuga took a seat on the train, he realized how he had begun to feel better. His heart wasn't as heavy. He wasn't so encumbered after all. Right around the time this realization came to him, the train itself seemed to shudder and shake. There was a loud thud on the roof, causing the entire car to rattle. Ryuga was nearly thrown from his seat to the floor, while several other people actually lost their balance. What the hell was that? One elderly man screamed as passengers began to shout and scream in dismay. In the end, it seemed like an isolated incident. The remainder of the ride home went smoothly, and by 6.30 or so, Ryuga had made it back to the city of Gardenvale. I really ought to visit more often, he said to himself as he slowly made his way home. It was Saturday, so there would be no school tomorrow. For the first time, in a long time, Ryuga felt the urge to do something, anything, to be social, to connect. His mind immediately flashed back to Akira's invitation earlier in the day. If he had had her number, he'd have maybe given her a call, but no such luck. At times like this, he cursed his own anti-social policies. In the end, he decided to head towards the arcade. He had a little change from his gracious aunt Samiko, so he decided to splurge a little. Along the way, Ryuga really couldn't overstate how great he felt. He didn't realize how much emotional baggage he'd been carrying around lately. Anger, sadness, depression. His very step seemed lighter. He was a dozen meters or so away from the entrance of the arcade when he heard a familiar voice. Ah, Ryuga! Akira shouted out of the blue. Oh, hey, Ryuga said as Akira ran up towards him. What are you doing here? I thought you had somewhere to be today, she asked. Yeah, I've gone and returned. I decided to stop by and play a few games before I head home. Oh, really? In that case, I'll come with you. Akira said as she slipped her arm around his before he could react. Oh, okay, but aren't you here with your friends? Ryuga asked as he nodded towards the group of people headed their way. Tarid, Benji, Jin, Linda, and two of her friends. Oh, them? Yeah, but I don't think they'd mind if we cut things short. I've never gotten time to properly talk to you. We're always so rushed at school. I'd actually like to chat with you. Hey, loser! What are you doing here? Tarid growled as he drew near, he and his jockstrap squad close behind. Ryuga barely registered his existence, choosing instead to focus on Akira. Okay then, let's go, he replied, allowing Akira to lead the way. Not so fast, Tarid said, grabbing Ryuga by the shoulder. Unlike their previous scuffle, Ryuga effortlessly shrugged off his grip, which sent Tarid into an even deeper rage. I'm speaking to you, you little maggot. Tarid grabbed Ryuga by both shoulders, pushing and pinning him against a nearby pole. Look at me when I'm talking to you, Tarid growled. Tarid, what's wrong with you? Akira began to protest, but Benji grabbed her by the arm before she could intervene. Uh, uh, stay out of this, little missy. This is between us men, Benji gloated. Men? There's four of you and just him. Some men you are, Akira shouted as she fought in vain to free herself. Just relax or you'll hurt yourself, girly. Let her go, underling, Ryuga said, completely ignoring Tarid once more. You little shit! Tarid screamed as he reared back to punch Ryuga in the face. For some reason, Tarid's movement seemed to play out in slow motion. It was child's play for Ryuga to brush off the attack, which he did with ease. Weak. I'm in a good mood right now. Don't mess it up. Ryuga said calmly as he finally addressed Tarid. Who the fuck do you think you are? 
Tarid shouted, lifting Ryuga off his feet and up by his collar. Enough! Tarid, stop! Akira shouted as she clawed and scratched at Benji. Are you really saying you prefer this orphan's company over us? Linda finally chimed in. If this is how you are all going to act, yes! Akira responded without a second thought. Linda glanced over at the situation with Tarid, then back towards Akira's pleading eyes. Tarid, let him down, Linda reluctantly said. No way! I won't be satisfied until I smash this little arrogant fuck's face! Tarid growled. Yeah, Tarid, let me down. Ryuga repeated, his voice cold and steely. His eyes had taken on a different tone, and Tarid realized something was now amiss. What the? Oop, too late. You had your chance, Ryuga said as he grasped both of Tarid's hands and squeezed. The sounds of bones popping immediately filled the air as Tarid's grip faltered, and he stumbled backwards. Tarid's face was contorted in pain and disbelief. What the hell did you just do, you freaking loser? Benji shouted finally releasing his grip on Akira as he dashed towards Tarot, who was now writhing on the ground. Tarot! Oh my god, Tarot! Linda said as she moved towards the injured boy with a startled expression. Ryuga? Akira said, frozen in place as she stared towards Ryuga, who, by all outward appearances, seemed calm. However, she got the impression that he was anything but. In fact, her senses were screaming suggesting that something terrible was about to happen. Akira had just quickly resolved herself to rush to Ryuga's side when all hell suddenly broke loose.